All right, we are live on Amazon Live and on YouTube. So if you guys are brand new here, welcome. My name is Monty Weaver. We are going to talk a lot about tech conference tech uh, that I'm going to be using for an upcoming event. So if you're brand new, uh, hit that follow button, hit that uh, subscribe button, depending on where you're watching me at right now. So awesome to see so many people on here. Typically, I go live uh, Monday through Thursday, 12 p.m. At least that's the attempted schedule on Amazon Live. So definitely mark your calendars if you want to see more about tech and some unboxing. We did an awesome unboxing this week of a new drone. So if you didn't get a chance to see that, um, go to here right here on Amazon Live and watch the previous replays. And you can check out that drone unboxing. I'm going to be showing you guys today a lot of equipment that I'm using. So if you have questions as I go through anything um, about the equipment that I'm going to be showcasing for an upcoming hybrid live stream conference, basically live streaming outside of this location, we're going to talk about it in this show. So I got everything. I got a carousel full of products today. So I'm going to make sure that we get our iPad set up so this doesn't cut off. And if you guys have questions throughout the show, definitely feel free to ask because that is why I am here. So good to see everybody here. So let's get started with the first item I have, um, which are the Honko 3K monitors. OK, so if I flip over here to this camera, you'll see that I have these three monitors in front of me. Um, these monitors are what I use for this pretty cool battle station. So I'm going to turn this just a tad. So you guys can see that. So this is my this is my battle station for live streaming. And there are three monitors here that I use to preview, which is this first one. I can look at all the different inputs that I have um, for the cameras that I'm bringing in, all the different, um, like if I want to bring my iPad device into my production, I could do that. Uh, if I want to bring my iPhone, anything like that, my computer, I actually have this computer is actually one of my inputs into my production as well. So I use these three 13 inch monitors and these are 3K monitors. And these are, I haven't seen a lot of 3K monitors before. So I love these, they're really high definition. This monitor is my output, my production output, which you guys actually see when I, so if I switch over to, um, you know, camera, you know, see it on camera five, you can kind of see it here if I had it more tilted. Um, and then this monitor up here is actually connected to my laptop because I use my software in this monitor here. So if I actually turn this on real quick, you'll be able to see the input from my laptop coming into here. So this is the station that I'm going to be using for uh, live streaming in the actual event. And I could actually go live to just Amazon right now with what I have here. Um, but I kind of have two stations and one going on over here. So let's minimize all of that right there. And let me grab my cable because I don't have it connected. So let's connect that and connect this. And I'll talk about the cables I'm using to connect as well. Uh, because for me, the cables that come inside of the, uh, the box, I actually prefer a different set of cables and I'll, I'll show you here why in a second. So now if I switch back over, you'll see that now I have this monitor is basically a dual screen. So I have my laptop connected to that monitor. And so I literally can run an entire live stream production with just this setup right here in my laptop okay so this is what i'm actually going to be using to travel with from my entire live stream and these are the hunko 3k monitors so these are the ones that i have highlighted in the product carousel right now now these actually come with a um a um a, a, a cover on them so if you want to use these to prop them up and like watch it as an external monitor you could do that okay now, I'm going to take uh, this monitor off real quick and show you guys. So I'm just going to disconnect it real quick from the cables here and show you that these are really thin monitors. Zed, Dan, good to, 
Good to see you. Yes, you caught me live, Dan. So these monitors are really thin, okay? So you can see the ports we have on here. We have uh, two USB-C ports and a mini HDMI port on this side. And then on the other side, you have uh, mini HDMI, I believe. Yep, mini micro HDMI here. And then you have you actually have a headphone jack on these monitors too. So if this we if this was a secondary monitor that you're listening to uh, or watching something, you can plug in headphones on it. And then you have your controls right here. So things like um, increasing, decreasing your brightness levels and all that good stuff. So I love this these monitors. They're they're really thin. So I, I believe the thickness on these are zero point. Um, three inches so they're really thin and so it allows me to put it on this with no problem all right so what did i do with my other cable i just dropped here all right there it is all right so these are the hunko 3k monitors these sell out pretty quick too um when i was when i first got this set up i had one monitor that i was using i was using just my switcher and one monitor and then i got a bigger switcher here and I needed to go and order two more monitors and these things were like sold out for a couple months. So I'm glad I actually was able to get my hands on them uh, when I did. Uh, Saucy, I think that is. Follow me on Amazon. Appreciate that. Uh, Dan said I run an entire live stream from my Lenovo Legion laptop and just the A10 Mini. I've been looking into a small second monitor though. Very helpful. Yeah, I like these. I like these because the resolution is really good on these. So those are the Hunko monitors. Now, in the box, they do come with the cables, um, your power cable, but I don't like the power cables that come in them because of the setup where I actually have L bracket cables. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in off of the other camera here to kind of show you uh, what I mean by this because you'll be able to see it here. So let me switch over camera five here. So these are L bracket cables. And the reason I like these are because especially like right here, if you notice this second monitor that I have right here, in order to make my cables work, the L bracket cable fits perfectly inside of here. So the second item I have in the carousel are the U are the U green USB C USB cables. And these are the L bracket cables. It's actually the top one. Um, right here okay so if i take this out that's what the cable looks like and it's just the l bracket usb c cable okay so if you're familiar with usb c you just the same thing except these are just uh cheap a little different right so i'll put that back there and get that to come back on there we go okay all right so that's what i use for that and then because those cables are just USB-C to USB-C, I need to plug them into power, okay? Because USB-C powered monitor. I have highlighted in the Amazon product carousel, the USB-C chargers. Now, let me see if I can take one off. I thought I had some extras around here. All right, I don't know which one I'm gonna unplug, so we'll see. Okay, I installed the production one, of course. All right, so. That USB-C cable is plugged into um, this USB power. This is the Anchor um, USB-C power charger right here. These actually come in a pack of two, which comes in handy. That's why I thought I had an extra one because I actually have three for the monitor. And then I had another one somewhere around here. But this is what I use to plug these into um, the power strip that's actually located under my desk here. I actually have two power strips underneath my desk full of stuff connected to it. Um, so the first power strip that I have has a lot of the ATEM, the, uh, the ATEM, the monitors, and uh, the projector, I believe, are all plugged into my first power strip. And even this camera that you guys are watching me on right here is actually plugged into power underneath my desk. So, um, so that's the power for that cable and then the mini HDMI to HDMI that I just showed you guys as well that's over here. I got that highlighted in a product carousel too. So 
anybody that does like the video production or home live streaming and you have a setup similar to this especially if you're using this extreme bay console this extreme bay console is pretty cool it's not sold here on amazon but if you if you check out some of my youtube content where i talk about the extreme bay console you'll be able to uh, check that out um because the L bracket cables make this work. If you don't use the L bracket cables, you'll have to separate these monitors like a lot, like pull them further apart. And then they hang off more than you probably would want them to hang off. So I like them having them as close as possible using the L bracket cables. So I have L brackets so a set for all three. So basically three, three of those cables, three of those cables uh, for my L brackets, okay? And these are mini HDMI to HDMI because I use this Blackmagic switcher. There's HDMI connections in the back of it. So HDMI out the back of the ATEM and into my monitor so I can see the uh, essentially the preview and the program feed. Okay. So that's kind of what this setup is um, inside of it. I do also have the Elgato Stream Deck. So I, I still got to program this Stream Deck. If you guys follow me here on Amazon, I keep bringing up the Stream Deck. I, I really do need to sit down and program it uh, for my Amazon live show so I can get all the graphics to pop up. So instead of me saying, like, clicking the button that says, don't forget to follow, I can just program the graphic into my Stream Deck, hit the button, and let it do what it do. But I just haven't gotten around to actually taking the time to set it up the way that I want to. But the Stream Deck is a really cool tool because it's basically a hotkey uh, device. So with one cable USB connected into my Mac Mini back here, it allows us to you know create a whole bunch of shortcut keys, control our lighting. That's one of the things I really like about it too. It allows you to control your lighting. Um, so I don't have... The lights hooked up up there but uh the new stream deck too or the new software in the stream deck you can uh there's a lot more controls like software controls and we'll, we'll probably do a live stream on that if you guys want to see that live stream just like say yes in the comments and we'll do a live stream like just the stream deck because you can do a lot of it you don't have to be a gamer you don't have to be a live streamer it's a really it's a really cool device that allows you to do a lot um and save some time because you can put a lot of shortcut keys in here. So I use the 32 key one and the 32 key one just fits well in here, but they also have them in the six key, the 15 key as well. So if you don't need a, you know, complete big one like this, you got different sizes that you can choose from as well. So definitely something to check out. Um, got a couple follows over here. Uh, Evie, I hope it's Evie and William. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Thanks for following me here on Amazon. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, if, you need, if you guys have questions, definitely feel free to ask me questions. I love to help educate as well. Uh, Enoch, thanks for following here on Amazon. I love to help educate you guys. Um, been in this tech space for a long time. I grew up in uh, the church world, in the ministry world, in the days of the overhead projectors, the tape ministry, um, and you know, got a chance to run cameras and audio and video and edit videos for the TV station. So got a lot of experience in this space um, and happy to help answer any questions for you guys when it comes to this stuff. If, if you're just getting started, maybe you've been doing it for a while and you got some insight, definitely feel free to chime in in the chat for sure. Uh, ben, Benger LLC, uh, Jorge, Phil, what's going on, Phil? Phil, that must be your other channel there. <laughs> Appreciate you following me on both channels there. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. You guys are great. So let's check out a couple other things we got in the carousel today. Um, now I do have some stuff hidden over my shoulder here. You guys may or may not see some of this stuff down here in the corner. So we're going to talk about that. Pamela, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you guys for following me here on Amazon. It means a lot to me. We're, we're going to look at some of the stuff we got in here too, okay? Carmelita, thanks for the follow. What's going on? Good to see you over here on Amazon. 
I gotta look, I gotta remember to look over here at my other channels. Alori, thanks for the follow over here. What's going on? Emmanuel, I see you watching from West Africa. That's awesome. Awesome. So the next one I got coming up here, Carmelita's gonna, Carmelita's gonna see some of this stuff in real time here soon. So she's getting a preview of some of the stuff I have here. Um, the next thing I have up is my switcher, my Blackmagic ATEM switcher. And this device is a game changer, I think, in video production because it allows you to control multiple camera inputs in like one device. Like this one device literally makes it look like there's an entire production going on here. And if you actually have someone that does this for you and you, you just focus on what it is that you do, you can just make their life easier. Um, <laughs> she says, of course, I will show you up for your expertise. Oh, look at that. I don't have that camera I talked to you about though in this, in this stream. I might have to add it in there so you can check it out. Um, but this is the ATEM switcher. Let me see if I can get a little bit of a better shot for you guys. Okay. Let's do this. All right. All right. I'm trying to turn it just a tad here so you guys can see that a little bit better there. All right. So now there are a lot of buttons on here, but you don't need, you don't need all the buttons. So I'm going to kind of do a little picture and picture action for you guys real quick here. Now I don't do picture and picture too often. So I always, um, forget which one I'm supposed to do. DVE seven. All right, there we go. So go picture and picture. So like just on the screen here, I can do picture and picture like just on the device. So having a hardware component, a lot, it one it gives you stability versus some of the software packages that are out there. Um, but essentially, I'm not using a lot of buttons on here, so you can pretty much discount like this entire middle section because these are dedicated to the specific camera called the Black Magic cameras. Now, I don't use Black Magic cameras, so a lot of these functions right here in this middle strip, I don't even use at all. Now, I do use the top area because the top area allows us to connect microphones in. So I actually have microphone one, which is this microphone that I'm talking to you guys on right now, which is the Rode Wireless Go 2. This is actually plugged into my microphone one. And right now it's turned on. So that's the red on button. And I can control the volume up or down with the two volume controls right beside it. Next to that, when I have microphone two, now microphone two is actually this boom arm that I have that I'm bringing into the frame right now. This is microphone two. Now I'm not using it right now, but if I wanted to, I could just hit the on button and it would turn it on. So the ATEM allows you to bring in, this specific ATEM model allows you to bring in two microphones into the production. And then you also have here your headphone volume. So I can listen to my entire production with my headphones. Right now it's set to mute because I don't have any headphones plugged into it, but you can uh, unmute it there. Uh, across the top here, there are things that you can do like the picture in picture like you guys see me have on right now. So in the bottom right corner, um, you see my side camera view. If I want to change to like my main camera, I can change that in real time. So now I have picture in picture set up uh, with a different camera angle. You can do things like, that's going to look a little crazy right now. I'm just going to warn you right now. Okay. You can do something like the side by side shots and you do it in like with a click of a button. So it's so much easier to do some of the production with this single device. Um, there's different transition effects that are built into here too. So let's do like some, some swipe up transitions here. So let's do something like, oops, let's do auto. There we go. So we've got squeeze down and we'll do one more okay so you have different transitions that are built into the device by itself if you have images you could actually bring in images into the software um, there's a couple buttons that allow for that if you have an emergency and something goes completely wrong you can just hit fade to black <laughs> so if you need a bailout system they have it built into here essentially uh, another thing that i like about this specific model is it's called the iso model okay and so what the iso model allows you to do is 
record each individual input that you have coming into it. So there's eight inputs in total that I could bring into this production, okay? So what that means is there's, um, I could essentially bring in eight different cameras. I could bring in, you know, four cameras and two iPads and two computers, you know, whatever that combination of eight is, eight inputs in here. But what I can do is record all eight inputs individually. Now, if you're a content creator, that's amazing because you can have so many different camera angles to create so much content and go back and parse that as you need it. Or if you don't need to record all eight individual uh, inputs, you could just record the one single output like you're seeing right now. So just the one feed that I'm sending out is what that recording is. But if I was recording ISO right now, you guys can see this angle, but it's still recording those other angles that I'm switching between. So I think that's really cool to be able to have that, uh, that video footage from all your angles the entire time that you're live streaming or that you're recording. Um, let me come up here and check out some of the comments here on Amazon. Uh, Yupini, I hope I said it right. I am horrible with names, y'all. I appreciate you following. Um, question, how do you set up the overlays? Is that a Windows software thing or is it built into the ATEM? So you can do it a couple different ways. The way that I'm doing it tonight, mine is software based. So I'm using the uh, Wirecast platform. Now I don't have my other camera set up up there. Let me see if I can, um, I thought about connecting that camera earlier and then I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna connect that camera. Now I need to connect the camera and I can show you a little bit easier over the shoulder. The reason I didn't wanna connect the camera is because I actually need a, uh, longer HDMI cable for it. So let me spin all the way around and let me connect this one up here and show you guys. So you can do overlays inside of inside of the ATEM, but you do need to use the chroma effect and the actual ATEM Blackmagic software to do the overlays inside of it. I just prefer to do it software based because it's quicker for me. And I've been doing it much longer software based, but you can do it on the ATEM itself. Um, I didn't turn on the camera, but I'll show you, I'll show you kind of behind the scenes of what I'm looking at right now to produce this for you once my camera turns on here. Um, and just so you remember which buttons you have programmed to do certain things or have they labeled in some way. Um, so, I sometimes what I do is I label my buttons now like for for the conference for the hybrid conference I will probably label my buttons if for more so for things that I'm not aware of that may happen like things that are out of my control like I may be using someone else's laptop or there may be some things going interchangeably but like I know for a shot without a shadow of a doubt I can visually see let's go over here I'll be able to visually see all my um, inputs here. So I know I can visually look and see, okay, camera one is my main shot. Camera five is my PTZ that we're looking at right now, that angle. Camera seven is my side shot. Camera five is looking up at the ceiling right now. So we'll switch camera five. So I won't label these, but what you can do, and I'll show you, is you can label it inside of the ATEM. All right, so let me see. Bear with me one second. Normally I wouldn't do that too much, but you can see that I have number one listed as main camera and number two listed as side camera. I could actually go into the ATEM software and rename them inside of the software so I don't actually have to put labels on the um, device itself and you know mess up the device itself. All right, so let me go. I got my other camera on now. So this is my setup to produce this live stream that you guys are seeing right now. And oops, so let me switch. Thought it was on camera one. Um, 
And so on the left hand side there, you'll see that's my Wirecast software and that's what I'm using to produce the live stream and that's where I'll put all my graphics. Um, so right now my graphics are along the second row and my ATEM is right here and picture in picture and then I'm obviously looking at YouTube chat and then Amazon chat on the far side. So the graphic that I have up on the screen, don't forget to follow. I can just change it with the click of a button on on the software so for me and, and that's one of the reasons i need to could just go ahead and set up the atem or the um the stream deck rather because i can set that also up in the stream deck and just hit a button and have the lower thirds come on a um, little bit more time to set up but i just need to go ahead and do it and stop faking it <laughs> um let's come up here george thanks for the follow uh, love the stream deck or the extreme bay max. I might get one for the Excel. If I get the ATEM, I use Linux as my main streaming platform, uh, but I don't have windows Mac. Yeah. I haven't tried streaming on Linux. I used to work a lot on the Linux side, but I haven't done it since I've kind of been in this space uh, of live streaming. Um, how does Wirecast compare to StreamYard? So Wirecast is more of a per Production type of software where you 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 have a lot of flexibility on where you're going to send your live streams to you basically can create whatever you want to create um, I'm trying to think of it it's it's a it's a heavy software like you have to install it so one it's not web-based stream yard uh, restream melon all those are web-based platforms, so you can access them from anywhere in the world, right? Just log in, access it. Wirecast, vMix, OBS, those platforms are uh, software that you must install on your computer, pay for it. Like Wirecast is not a, it's not the cheapest live streaming platform that's out there. You're going to pay a little bit for it. I think it's around six, seven hundred bucks for it and um, the hundred dollar yearly renewal on it. Uh, oh yeah, six, eight hundred. Yep. So, um, so you're going to pay for that part of it, but it does allow you to do things like bring in like scoreboards. Um, it does allow you to connect your Twitter. It does connect a lot with other video, higher end video production stuff like that are used in more television stations. So it gives you that capability for sure. Um, it does require a, a, good computer to operate it on now like i'm actually dropping frames tonight for some reason and i think it's because i'm splitting my feed out to amazon and uh youtube and they have two different bit rates and two different uh resolutions that they accept so um that's probably one reason i'm dropping tonight but there's a lot of things i can do inside of wirecast i can do the iso recording in wirecast too so i just prefer to do it on the atem but if i wanted to record all my individual inputs in Wirecast, I could actually just do it in Wirecast. So I kind of have some dual redundancy built in with the ATEM and Wirecast because of what they're able to do. I've just been using Wirecast for so long because when Facebook Live first came out, um, you could actually go live from your computer using Wirecast. They had already had that built in um, as one of their functions. So I've been using it for a long time. Um, is that a remarkable two on your desk? I want to glow up <laughs> and a, a glow. What, what is a remarkable two? Cause I don't have a remarkable two, but you tell me what a remarkable two is. I'll let you know what I got on my desk. Uh, Romel, Romal, thanks for following. Um, e-paper tablet. No, I don't, I, I got, this is my iPad. Y'all talking about this? This is my iPad. I'm just using it to watch the comments and then uh, and then um, slide the products in the carousel. So with Amazon Live, the only way you can slide the products in your product carousel is to use the um, is to use the uh, tablet or your iPhone. So I've got my chat that I'm watching you guys on and going across here. So speaking of that, let's check out the next one I got. Um, uh, somebody said, where can I get the stand? So the stand is um, on, it's not sold on Amazon. 
It's sold. Yep. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's right there. Appreciate that. They're on it. I love, I love you guys because you guys are like on it. Um, but yeah, there it is right there. Um, let me take a look at the, yeah, I know, right? Remarkable 2. Send me, send me something I can review here on Amazon. Yeah, so this is this is actually an older iPad too, y'all. Like I haven't upgraded this iPad in quite some time. This was when they first came out with that super large iPad. This is that version. All right, let me show you guys some cables. So tonight I'm talking about um, who's that over there? Charles from Michigan. Uh, hey Charles, I, I missed your question over there on YouTube. So let me know exactly if you come over to Amazon. Um, definitely. You can buy it right on Amazon. So anybody that's watching on YouTube, check the pin post at the top. Click on over. Come on over to Amazon. And all the products I'm talking about tonight are actually in the product carousel. So all you have to do is just click on a product. So Amazon makes it super easy. So if you guys see anything that you like or interested in, you can just click on it. And then if you actually want it, you can add it to your cart and check out. Uh, if you do see anything that says like lightning deal or special, make sure that you check out while I'm live so that you can get that discount for sure. Um, do they still sell the iPad? I believe they do. I believe they do. I know they sell the older versions of the iPhone for sure. Um, let's check it out real quick. Let's check it out real quick. So two here. So let's go over to, that's my calendar. Amazon here. And let's see, do a little picture in picture. So now this picture in picture that I'm doing with you guys is software, complete software base and Wirecast. So iPad 12.9. So they've got 2021 version 12. Point. This is the version I have right here. So they have a renewed version here um that you can check out for sure but i like the big one it, it's easier on the eyes and i recently kind of started playing this like amusement park tycoon game which i kind of like so it's easier to play it on the big ipad so there's an the ipad here uh i'll grab this url and post it in the chat and check that out okay all right, let's jump into some of the cables. So, pulling off a uh, pulling off any live stream event, you kind of need the right cabling. So, I actually talked about these cables in a YouTube video, and let me grab it here. And what I needed to do was uh, something changed over there. I don't know what just changed over there. Is my camera still on? Yeah. One of the things I needed to do, um, I have a, I have this particular cable highlighted in a product carousel right now, is I needed to run uh, a camera a further distance away from where my setup was. So I forgot which I forgot which video it was, but um, at my church there's a camera that's about uh, there's one that's 50 feet away, a good 50 feet away, and then there's one that's a good like 150 feet away. Now, if you're, if you're trying to run cables that connect, like I have multiple cameras here, cables going all over the floor and everything, you're good until about 50 feet when it comes to these HDMI cables, okay? H, you guys know what the HDMI cables are, right? I hope so. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do some training, but these HDMI cables. So, um, you guys know that standard HDMI cable, right? Now... When you go past the 50 feet mark, you run into signal degradation. So the signal is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker, right? So what I found, a uh, guy, AJ, the CEO, he's on YouTube and he creates a lot of cool content. He was talking about these fiber HDMI cables and they're one-way HDMI cables that you can go further than 50 feet. And I tried it out and it worked. And I was like, oh man, this is awesome because after 50 feet, you, you really can't use just HDMI. You have to use SDI cables and you have to use converter boxes. And like, do I got my converter boxes in here? I got 
one under my desk for sure. I've got tools in here for days. Okay, I can't. Uh, of course, I can't find one in there. But you got these. You need these converter boxes to make it work. And I didn't feel like. Oh, there's one. There's one. Okay. So let me grab this up here. So you know, for those long runs, you need like these converters SDI to HDMI HDMI to SDI so you, you you run your SDI cables inside of here right and then your HDMI would be the shorter because uh, connecting to whatever that HDMI product is right so you need these converters and I was running into issues because the signal wasn't picking up and I didn't know if it was a converter box or the SDI cable and so when I saw his video I was like let me just buy and test out a, a 150 foot HDMI cable. No converters needed, just one cable and fiber cables are great. I used to work in that environment where we ran fiber throughout the whole building. And so I was like, fiber HDMI, that should work. So I picked up some of these um, that I'm gonna use for conferences now. And these are 50 foot, cause I don't really have to run them that far from what I'm gonna be doing, but I do have, um, a couple long ones, a couple like 150 foots in my uh, chopping cart, just in case I do think I'm gonna need one. But these are 50 foot HDMI, fiber HDMI cables. So these are one way cables and they tell you which side is which because you definitely have to plug in them to the, the right side. So you have one side that says source, okay? So that would be like your camera for this example. And the other side that says display and display would be like my ATEM, it would be my TV, uh, it would be my, yeah, that's probably only two I've really used. But you have to plug the right side into the right side, okay? Even though they're both HDMI, just make sure that you plug the right end to the right end, okay? And I have four of these that I picked up to use on all my cameras that I'm going to be doing for this conference because they're going to make my life a lot easier. <laughs> um, inside of the box too, when you get these, they actually come with these adapters. Because, like I said, one of the options is to plug it into a TV. So you can actually take one of the HDMI ends, the, the uh, display end, and you plug that HDMI into here, into the adapter, and then you plug the other side USB into your TV. So um, pretty cool um, cabling that um, I've been I've been liking these fiber HDMI cables. Now I'm not going to be actually using these adapters because I don't need to, but they are included in the box. Uh, let me jump over here and check these questions and these comments. Um, uh, so he said, at that point, you can go HDMI wireless. Yep. So I will talk about this tonight. So I do have that option too. And Carmelie said, this is like masterclass. Uh, Pamela says fiber HDMI. Well, yeah, fiber HDMI is pretty cool. Um, let me jump over here. See these other comments I got. Um, how do you get, how can I, how can get my video clearer on my live video for YouTube? I'm running OBS on HP computer. So that's a question from Charles. So to get your video clear, there's a couple different components just in general. So one's going to be your camera. Um, depending on the resolution of what your camera can produce, then it'll give you a certain look. So the Sony mirrorless camera that I'm using right now, um, I'm gonna, let me grab the Sony camera. I'll highlight it in the carousel right now. So the Sony mirrorless camera that you're looking at me right now, that camera is built to, to bring in 4K with the lens and everything. And there's a lot of change, uh, settings I can adjust on the camera to make the picture look just super clear, right? And that, that's just the camera itself. Like that's what the camera's just gonna do without any work. 
Um, and my other camera, this one, this is also a Sony mirrorless camera. So um, those of you all that are watching me on Amazon, I have it highlighted in the carousel, the camera that I use, which is that Sony a6400. So that can, that's part of it. And then the lens is part of it too. So on this camera, I have a Sigma lens on it that gives me that blurry background effect. So it's creating a different look than this camera because I have a different lens on this camera that doesn't give me like a deep blurry background effect look. So your camera and your lens combination is part of it. Um, and then one more kind of use case is the, um, this one right here. So this camera right here is my PTZ camera. Now this PTZ camera is built to do a little bit different. So it's not going to give me that same crispy look. Um, but there are settings that I can actually go into my PTZ camera and adjust the look. So your cameras have, you know, I would go in and, and change some of the things you can do on your cameras. Um, so let's, I can go color and you can see, I can change some things right there just with, with just with this right um lighting is also important if you don't have proper lighting you're not going to get a really good uh picture so if i kind of come over and show you guys one of the lights i have here which camera is that camera two let me back out i have this big soft box up here so that gives me um some really good lighting on this angle right here so that's a big part of um, getting a better image quality and um, what else what else can help you so it, it actually has nothing to do with OBS or your computer it's your camera your lens and your lighting essentially those are the big things I would tell you to to really dive into a little bit more um, do 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 uh, I'm not reading the comments uh, love my son Dan says love my Sony a6400 with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens yeah my favorite combo is the Sony a6400 with the 16 millimeter lens I remember watching a YouTube video um, and and the lady that had it I was like when I was watching the videos like she was going through her her YouTube setup I was like whatever setup that is that's the look I want and so um, that was a couple of years ago um let me scroll up here on amazon my amazon chat is on fire summer says what's the benefit of this compared to regular 4k hdmi um if you're talking about the cables um it does allow for 4k transmission so same thing essentially because the cable the cable uh, allows for it fiber is just a faster it just sends the signal faster. That's that's the only difference. So whatever that signal is, if it's 4K, if it's 8K, 16K, it just fiber just allows you to send it faster. Um, I use Sony the A6100 as my front-facing camera, 16 millimeter lens. Yep. So if you guys are looking at this, I would definitely consider the Sony's for anyone that wants to upgrade their like live streaming setup. Sony 64, 6100, 6400 cameras are probably the, the two most popular ones to do it with. Um, and if you guys are on, let me show y'all a cheat code. Let me show y'all a cheat code. Now don't go buy all of these because like I might, I might want another camera, but I'm going to show you guys something on here on Amazon. So Amazon has, um, they brought back some of their monthly payment options. So if you're looking to upgrade, I would check out to see if your account qualifies for the monthly payment option, right? Because if you can see here, this is a camera that I use, the Sony a6400. Now this one doesn't come with the lens on it. So you have to buy the lens separate. But if you look on the right hand side, there's a five monthly payment option. So if you don't want to spend the whole amount up front, you can actually do the monthly payment option if your account is approved for it. So I would definitely check that out um, if you guys are interested in checking out this camera. So, um, you know, just something to just something to think about. A little secret tip there. OK. Um, let's see here. What else we got going on? Um, 
saw something about Pamela's comment. Okay, there we go. What cameras will you be utilizing for the conference and how many will you be setting up? So I'm going to be using my uh, PTZ cameras as my main setup. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to highlight two of them. Um, the other one sold out. I did a YouTube video and the cameras are sold out and I did an Amazon video and um, it sold out. Um, I can grab it real quick. Let me grab it because it is right here. All right, let me go wide on this because I'm, I don't even know if I need to show y'all my overhead as well. So to show you how I'm going to control it. Well, how I'm going to control some of it. All right. So let me grab a PTZ camera. It won't be the, uh, all right. Now this one is not on Amazon right now because it's sold out. Oh, my YouTube video did so well, I guess, but this is the Zego uh, PTZ camera and uh, pan tilt zoom. And on the back here, I can daisy chain them together. So it's going to allow me to control multiple of these PTZ cameras with a joystick. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, this has HDMI connection. So that's how I'm going to actually uh, connect these to my ATEM is through HDMI. So we're in one HDMI from each camera into here and using those, those fiber HDMI connect, uh, cables I just talked about and um, 1080p, 60 frames a second. And that's kind of how I'm going to use these. Um, so this is the Zego. But like I said, the Zego sold out. The price point was like really good on the Zegos and there was a hundred dollar coupon for it too. So I can see why it sold out. Um, the other camera I'm going to be using is let me, let me move. Okay. Well, Y'all can see it back here. This is the PTZ optics back here in the back. That's a, uh, PTZ camera. That's a, that's a, uh, uh, I'm all in my camera view. Oh, let me move that out the way. Hold on. All right. There we go. All right. I'm trying to move out the way, but in the frame and trying to figure it out y'all. So PTZ optics right there. That's the one I have highlighted in the product carousel. Now, um, that's a 20 X zoom. So I don't lose any resolution 20 times zoom in. And that's you at that's allows for HDMI and USB. So I could actually just run a USB cable from my PTZ and plug it into like my Mac mini or my laptop. So if you want to be really cool and you have no purpose for like conference equipment, but you want a PTZ camera, so you can just pan and tilt and zoom it. You can just use USB, no capture cards, and just go right into your setup. Um, so I'll be using that one right there. And then I have the other one that's pointed at, pointed over here it is a 20, is a 12X rather. So, but I can't show you that one because, well, maybe I can. I just gotta, all right, let me turn. Let me grab camera one and point it at camera two. Okay. All right, so, oh, oops, up there on the shelf up here, this is another PTZ optics camera. So this is a 12X zoom. So I'll be bringing this one as well. So that's three PTZ cameras that I'll be bringing. Now, I do have some goodies up here that were sent to me from uh, BZB gear. Now I haven't unboxed them and got a chance to do the videos yet, but the bottom one down here, that's another PTZ camera. That's a white PTZ camera. And that one's pretty cool. Um, and then if you want to count another camera, that's a drone. So I may bring that if I have enough space. And I did an unboxing here on Amazon live with that camera. So those are a few. And then the camera that you're looking at me on, I'm going to be bringing that one. Now I won't, I won't be using that to live stream the conference. I'll be using this one more so to get behind the scenes footage so I can create another YouTube video and document the process and, um, get some B roll, do some interviews with people, um, at the conference. So I'll be using that one because it's more mobile. I can just stick it on the tripod, take it around with me. So I'll be bringing 
a lot of equipment. I'll be clearing out this room and putting it in some cases and we'll talk about cases here in a second too. All right, I know I didn't spark a whole bunch of conversation and questions, so hopefully I don't miss anything. So I'm gonna try to try to read these real quick over here. And while I'm doing this, if you guys are, um, if you haven't followed yet or subscribed yet, do that while I'm trying to play catch up here. Um, Dan says, ever had any experience with vMix? Yes, I have used vMix. Um, I've, I've worked with a couple churches with vMix, but I personally just don't use it. I haven't had the time to like really dive into it, um, but I have used it before. Awesome program. Um, Noel says, hi from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Awesome. Dig Fusion Media is joining from Nigeria. What's going on? Um, Dan says secondary camera is this a 6,000 with the 3.5. Yeah, I, I have, I, that's the one I think I have on here. I think that lens is my 3.5 lens on that one. And then I have another small lens in here. I don't, they call that the kit lens, right? So I got another lens inside of here. It's my, this is my 3.5 to 5.6, 16 to 50 lens inside of this bag. So got a lot of lenses give you different looks so if you if you guys ever find like a look that you really like from a um, a content creator try to figure out what lens they're using too because that, that, that'll give you um, a, a different look and feel um digifusion media says my best cam right now is the sony zv e10 Man, everybody's talking about that camera. Everybody's talking about that camera. Y'all gonna make me look it up and see if I can fit that into my workflow some type of way. Like I really need another camera in my life, right? Uh, Miss Felicia Austin, what's going on? Good to see you. Saw you on uh, um, Facebook earlier. All right, let's go back up here. Appreciate you guys following me here on Amazon. I'm almost caught up on my on my chat here, Willie, thanks for the follow. Amazon customer says it's following. Uh, Mr. Mike, thanks for following. Uh, Carmelie says no more cameras. I know, I don't need no more. Now, if they put that Zego back on there, I'm telling y'all, the Zego was at a really good price. Now, I did reach out to them and they said they would be willing to send me another camera because I told them I was gonna go buy it. So the Zego one was sponsored, they sent it to me, um, but like, I'm glad they sent it to me. That camera is ridiculously good. Um, I love that camera already. I've only used it like twice. Um, the only reason it's not hooked up right now is just because I know I, I got to break this stuff down and pack it up. Um, Willie says, like the like that Extreme Bay holder you have for the, your Extreme Dream Deck XL. Appreciate it. Yep, it's on centerrails.com. Um, I actually have a YouTube video on it. If you go, if you, um, there's a YouTube video I did on it. If you follow my channel over there, I did one on the, um, ATEM and I put it in there. I, I'm, I'm going to reach out to them and see if they can add it to Amazon too, because it'll, uh, it's, it's, it's a really cool device, especially, you know, to, to have like a all in one system. Like if I, I don't really need all of this for like what I do, this is just more so for like my business, you know, working, coaching, mastermind, Zoom sessions, right? But just for like live streaming, this is all I like really need right here. This is like it. Um, appreciate the other Amazon customer that follow. Uh, not a lot of difference from the ZV-1 and the ZV-1 has additional features, but no interchangeable lens. Yeah, I think that's the main thing people like is that interchangeable lens on that the, on that new one. Um, Noel says, need some recommendations for camcorders at a reasonable price for live streaming corporate events and conferences need a better Zoom. Um, so camcorders, so I, I've used the, I'm looking at the price point too, need a better Zoom maybe. Okay, let me grab this model and look that up over here on Amazon. Now, those of you that are watching on YouTube, if you come over, if you check the pin post and come on over to Amazon, I have a lot of products in the product carousel, so I can just add them in there and you can, y'all can just click on to. And let's see what we got here. Yeah, so this is a good one. I like this one. Uh, 32. 
I haven't used a lot of camcorders um, because some of the mirrorless cameras and the lenses give me a really cool look that I'll need. But there's nothing wrong with camcorders by no stretch to me. There's nothing wrong with them at all. I just haven't used a lot of them. Um, I have used this one, the Sony FD-RAX. I have used that one before. And then the other ones that I've used, they've been like lower model ones. Ooh, y'all look at this. Here's another one. See, this is what I mean. Like Amazon has brought this back, this payment option thing. So if you're looking to upgrade some of your stuff, they have, you know, something like this. Now, I'm not saying y'all need a $2,800 camera, but like if you were in the market for it, they have like this five monthly payment option for it. And I know some of my home studio people, I'm going to switch gears real quick, like the um, the, Son the uh, Shure microphones, like the top of the line microphones, even that one is on a monthly payment option. So, but again, your, your account has to qualify for it. So the Shure SM7B, if you don't want to pay the 400 up right, you can split it over five months, no interest. So, but your account has to qualify for it. So something to check out, you know, if you're looking to upgrade some gear. We got some options out here, y'all. We got options. Um, may want to consider the Mevo camera as well. The Mevo now they have the uh, the four, the f the three camera setup too. I had a I had a church. They had a Mevo, and we actually went away from the Mevo Mevo because they do have the personnel to do more of the controlling and. Um, but if you definitely have a, like a solo person operation or you have to do it yourself, the Mevos are good options for that. I'm, I'm big on use cases, so I really don't believe in a one size fits all. So de definitely depending on your use case, there are some some setups, some equipment that works better in certain use cases. Because you also consider like learning curve, the experience level that someone may or may not have, how much time they actually want to spend trying to figure this stuff out. So. Um, the Mevo is a great solution too, for some cases. I like that. Um, Timothy says connecting the Hollyland Mars 400 Pro to a Blackmagic 4K, then to the H10 Mini, where there be audio sync issues that show up in the live feed. Can I do that quick in real time? Is what I'm thinking right now. Cause I have I have I have my Hollyland right here. I've done it before, but I haven't paid attention to it now. If my sync, let me know if my sync is on point right now with this camera, and then I'll test it out um, because I've, I've been playing with a lot of settings. So if my sync is off right now, I don't want to test it out because my sync is already off, right? But if my sync is working right now, I'll go ahead and hook this up real quick. It's on. All right. All right, Timothy. Gosh, you're making me do some work, Timothy. I would, I was going to take it easy tonight, but I'm doing this for you, Timothy. So, um, because I am going to talk about this anyway tonight. So, uh, so let me go ahead and highlight this. So this is the 400S Pro now that I'm using. Um, let me find it in the product carousel. Randall, what's going on? <laughs> oh, Randall has to go live. Randall, what are you talking about? Before you go, what are you talking about? That way, in case if you guys see anybody with a blue check mark, they are also Amazon live streamers. So definitely uh, make sure that you check out the other streamers here that are on Amazon. We have some amazing people that stream on Amazon um, and Randall is one of them. So it's always cool when you see another Amazon live streamer like in your own feed because I think we're few and far between. So Randall, good to see you on here. But yeah, if you're able to put in what you're gonna be talking about tonight, definitely feel free to do that. All right, so I'm going to unbox this. Those of you that are just jumping in, welcome. My name is Monty Weaver, and we're talking about equipment for live streaming conferences. A lot of this you can use in your home office studio setup, but specifically I will be going to live stream a conference and kind of just going through some of the gear that I'm going to be using. Now, I got some batteries down here that hopefully are charged um, to set this up. All right, so we are going to hook this up. All right, so Hollyland, I'm just going, I'm not going to explain this too much, but this is a wireless video system essentially. So I'm going to send my camera wirelessly 
into my production, all right? So let me grab, or let me go wide over here so you guys can see this, that camera back there. All right, so that's the camera that I'm gonna be using to, um, right now it's physically connected. You can see the cables coming off of it. It's physically running HDMI into my uh, ATEM, but we're gonna turn it into a wireless connection here in a second. So, so I've got my receiver, or transmitter rather, got that hooked up with the antennas on it. Um, PJ, kick me out. What does that mean, PJ? Are you, are you giving me a heads up that I need to kick you out? Because I know where the button is. <laughs> All right, and here is the receiver. Now, these only come with one charger. Um, so you got the set, but it only comes with one charger. So I just don't even use the charger. I just bought newer batteries and right beside, right beside the, um, the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro and the product carousel, I actually have these batteries next to it too. So. All right, so we'll add the batteries in here. And I need some cables. I got trash over here. All right, all right. I've got some HDMI little short cables back here somewhere. All right, I need one for that, and I need one for that. Okay. All right, so. Um, Timothy says I'm thinking of using it for a second. Yeah, that would be a good setup for the secondary camera. All right, so receiver and let's grab here. And here's the other HDMI. So this one is going to go on top of the camera. So. I'm going to, let's do it in reverse here. So I want to take my transmitter or my receiver rather and hook it into um, one of my inputs on my ATEM. So we'll do that first. Yep, dropping remotes back here. I got all these remotes. All right, let's see if we can get rid of number eight for now. I think that's number eight. No, number seven, eight. Okay. It says number eight, but I don't know what I got plugged in there. Okay. Doing this for you, Timothy. All right. So that's number eight. So I'm going to turn on my, turn it on here. And let me move it in the back. I think one time I got interference on my microphone when I was doing it because I had both wirelesses going on. All right, so got that one plugged in there. And we we're going to plug in this onto that camera. So let's switch cameras so y'all can see what I'm doing. And so here's my physical connection. So I'm going to lose my physical connection. All right, because this is. This is my HDMI cable that's running down behind my desk over to my switcher. So I'm getting rid of that. And then I'm just going to plug in HDMI into here. Because I have a, this is just a little, this gray piece is just an HDMI adapter to mini HDMI. Okay, so we got that. And turn on power here. And let's move that down. All right, and I see it's syncing with my ATEM right now. Okay, so it should be coming up here shortly. So if I show you guys over here, bam, all right. So now it's up. All right, so now we're back. And now this is the wireless. So Timothy, you let me know 
what do you think about the sync issue here? So we are wirelessly connected. Hollyland Mars 400S Pro wirelessly to the ATEM Mini Extreme and um, using a Sony A6400 camera. So, and this is a wireless connection. The sync is just fine, awesome. Now, for some of y'all, I have to prove the fact that this, oh no, I can't prove the fact it's wireless because I got a dummy battery connected into it. So I could move around the room, but it'd be too much extra work. I'm not gonna do all that extra work. Um, but, so yeah, this is the wireless connection with the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro. So I hope you guys uh, got some value out of that part of it because I, I love this device. So I will definitely be using this. I actually used the Hollyland on the PTZ camera before just to test that out and it works great on the PTZ camera as well. Um, so we got that going on there. So what else we got here? Um, like I said, I got the, the newer batteries um, highlighted in the product carousel right now. That's what I'll use for the Hollyland system. Um, also use them for other stuff too, but um, I definitely had to get them for the Hollyland system because like I said, it only comes with one um, DC power plug. So I just needed uh, another, I think that's some batteries for it. Um, sync is near perfect, awesome, awesome. Yeah, they said the, the pro version is faster than the, the the regular 400 version, so that's good. Um, let's see, I know I skipped over a couple things here. Uh, there's no way I'll cover everything I talked about in this feed today. Um, laptop, like those headphones. Um, I'll talk about the newer tripod. So I will be taking some tripods with me and I got a set of two of these newer tripods and one of them is actually being used for my, my fill light back there. Um, but this is the other newer tripod. So this has a uh, screw mount on here. So what I'm gonna do is just screw on uh, my cameras on the top of here. So I'll do two cameras. Well, I'm actually gonna do two cameras on one here and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that too. If this adapter works right. I didn't check it on here. All right, so I have this dual mount, camera mount system that I'm gonna use, and I'll highlight that too. I thought it was next to, I thought I put it next to the tripod. Maybe I, I put it next to the other tripod, that's what I did. Uh, I got a lot of stuff in the product here, so y'all, so if y'all are scrolling through there and y'all want me to hit something in particular, let me know because there's no way I'm gonna get through everything tonight. Um, so I wanna put two cameras, I wanna put two PTZ cameras essentially on my tripod. So I use this little dual mount system right here. And so now I can, can, I can put one PTZ camera here and one PTZ camera here. So I can have one that's zoomed in on the stage and one that's zoomed out a little bit more and when I, pan and tilt one of them the other one's still looking where it needs to go so it looks like you have a whole bunch of cameras but essentially i'm just going to use one tripod and have two cameras mounted on here and then on my other tripod i'll probably mount the other camera but i'm going to be bringing another little amazon basic tripod with me too i should have ordered two of these to be honest i should have got two of these but oh well i didn't think i was gonna bring four ptz cameras either when i when I was thinking this through, so, um, but, yep, I'll be bringing that for mounting some cameras, all right, so, and as you see, I like a lot of the, the newer products in there, newer, newer, however you say it, I don't think none of us know how to actually pronounce their name, but I have their batteries, I have their tripods, I have their light, <laughs> so I got a lot of their products, hey, newer, send me some more products to talk about here on Amazon. Um, uh, you need to be careful that you connect your HDMI to the monitor. Don't connect to the Hollyland to the monitor itself, or it'll hit some bad latency. I've never connected anything to my monitor, so um, don't connect the Hollyland to the monitor itself. Yeah, I've never connected my Hollyland to the monitor. I've always connected my Hollyland into my production. 
Um, okay, camera Hollyland monitor, not camera monitor Hollyland. Okay, yeah, I've I've never connected it to the monitor. Um, let me jump over here. Uh, live production tips and tools says, okay, I think that y'all were talking to yourselves. With that budget, you can find good mirrorless cameras. They get better results. Yeah. Um, Monty, have you checked CVW wireless transmitter system? Um, no, I haven't. So it's always cool when you do like these tech streams because people ask if I've tried something or if I know about it. There are so many different products on the market. They're like, I'm not buying all that stuff. Um, so the stuff I, I do feature, or if I, if I know something about it, I can reference it, but I've not used that one. But if these companies want to send me product, they can do so. Y'all just shoot them an email and tell, tell them to send me some product and I'll take a look at it. But I haven't used that specific system. So like I, I was familiar with Hollyland, but Hollyland sent me the 400S Pro to talk about. So they were like, hey, you want me, can we send you this? And you create a YouTube video? I was like, no, but I'll review it in real time on Amazon. And so I literally sat here and I unboxed it and I tried to figure it out. Um, I knew how they worked, but I had never used one before myself in the production. So, um, yeah, I, tr I try to um, talk about the things I've used, but I'm not familiar with that one specifically. Um all right, what else? Uh, did I miss any questions? I think I'm caught up on, on both sides here. Um, all right, let's see. And let me scroll back. Okay, um, let me talk about the PTZ Optic Superjoy real quick. So the PTZ cameras are controlled a couple different ways. So I actually have um, what's called a huddle cam controller um, that I've used before. So if you follow me on YouTube, you've seen the huddle cam controller, but this time I'm going to be taking the super joy controller, which is the one back here, which is the IP based one. Um, and this is their newer one. And so this is how I'll be able to control everything. Now my top down camera, I don't have plugged in right now and it'll probably act crazy here and plus i got no light shining over here either so it's like completely dark over here um but by default i can even change like i can change the the zoom which camera i want to control they have this thing called basic and, and matrix mode which is pretty cool so if you have multiple people controlling um uh, the controller it can prevent them from doing certain things so there it is there's a top down shot of it um I can change the focus like just by turning the dial on it. So that's um, this is PoE too. So it's power over Ethernet. So it's a pretty cool controller, and it's from from PTZ Optics, and they sent this one over. So shout out to PTZ Optics. I love when companies like send stuff over for Amazon Live, so I can test it out in real time and see how it works. Um, but I'm a big fan of their products in general. Got two of their cameras already, so using that and what i like about these joysticks is just because that other camera i have is a zigo camera and the other camera i have up there is called a bzb camera the controller still works with all the brands so that's a nice bonus as well for these controllers so that's the one i got highlighted but again the super joy is in there too so i got two options in there looking for a budget friendly one um here on amazon i got the huddle cam HD in there um, and then if you're looking for one that can give you more functionality also got the super joy in there too so two different joysticks that you can choose from um, what else I got on my desk here under my desk there's a 10 port um, outlet heavy duty outlet and also one back here because when you do conferences, you need power. So I will be bringing along one of these. So this is a uh, 10 port power strip. Now, what I like about these power strips over like the traditional smaller ones is the fact that when you have certain things that take up like multiple spaces, you don't want to lose any space. So like, you know, if 
if I had like one of the little short, small ones, like this could probably like overlap and cover two outlets. And then you just lost the whole outlet because of one of the power bricks was too big. So I like these because they're spaced out more and I can actually use all the outlets. So I will use all the outlets on this. Um, one of the last conferences that I streamed, I actually had, you know, just a phone charger plugged in and people that couldn't find power outlets on the wall because the hotels don't have that many. He was like, hey, can I get some power? So sure, just plug in right here. I got plenty of it. Um, but I do, I will bring one of the smaller ones just to have it with me, but this is not priority. This is more so like a backup or, you know, just extra, you know, gotta just have extra stuff with you sometimes because you never know you never know if you're gonna need it all right um next up here on amazon um i have the rode wireless go 2 system which is the microphone setup that i'm using right now um plugged in here and can we see it over here camera 2 I took my other camera real wide, but here's the other end right here. So it comes with um, two two uh, microphones, one receiver, and um, a pouch that I got over there. But being able to bring in wireless audio really clean is what I use here. So I'll be using, oops, wrong one. I'll be using uh, the Rode Wireless Go 2s for, for like interviews when I interview people, um, have it plugged plugged into there and I'll be using the Rode Wireless Go interview microphone too so these are definitely hard to come by on Amazon gee it took me a while to get this one so as you can see it's actually still in the box I haven't even unboxed that one yet um Felicia says I use one of those tacked to the back of my bookcase in the studio for the lights <laughs> We come up with some creative ways to do some stuff. I have, I've got some little lights that are like under my bookshelf right there. I don't turn them on because the color is not what I want, but I thought I, I should have put it further back, but I had this, these little lights back there. So I'm gonna have to try something a little bit different back here with the shelf. And you see my cable hanging down. That's that, I had to run the HDMI cable for that PTZ camera, so. But otherwise, that cable wouldn't be there because the only reason it's there because I needed to show y'all this other view. Uh, Willis says, yeah, the goes on back order for months. Just got mine last week. Gee, yeah. It's it's so hard to come by certain certain things in this time that we're in. Um, another wireless uh, microphone setup that I have, shout out to Comica because they sent me a pair of... Uh, of these um, are their Boom XD2s. Now I haven't used the, those in a while, but I will be taking those with me because I'm going to be recording footage for myself. So I need to be mic'd up. And then I'm obviously micing up uh, the people at the conference. So I'll probably, I don't know. I don't know if I should use the Comicas or have them use the Comicas, but Either way, I'm going to be mic'd up. So I'm going to be bringing two different sets of wireless microphones, the Rhodes and the Comicas that I have uh, highlighted in the product carousel. Both of them are uh, really good. Um, the Comicas do come with some extra cables. So depending on the camera that you're using, it'll come with different cables. So make sure that you use the right cables. You actually look at the label on the cable. Make sure like if you have a Sony camera that you use the Sony uh, cable that comes along with it. If you're using like a, a Canon camera, make sure you use the Canon cable that comes with it. So uh, the Rode Wireless Go just comes with the one cable. The Comicas come with individual cables based on the camera that you're using. Um, Geek Dev says, uh, what camera are you using right now? So I'll go back and highlight that one in the product carousel. So I'm using the Sony a6400 right now. Um, and this is the lens I have on it is the 18 to 135 lens on it right now. So got that highlight in the product carousel. I've been, I've been using the Sony a6400 for like two years now. And even though it's an older model camera, I'm thinking about getting a third one because when I create content, YouTube content specifically, and even Amazon live content, um, I, 
having having cameras with the same lenses makes the video quality look better. So like if I switch between this lens and um, uh, let's turn this one back over here. If I switch between that lens and this lens, you can definitely see the difference in it. So it's, it's nothing wrong with it, but like I already know what I'm going to get. So that's why I have multiple cameras of the same manufacturer because I, I, I want a, the same look on my cameras. So I'm thinking about getting another 6400 because I want two of these cameras for two different angles in here because my other one is back here. That's a Sony a6400 back there, but that's on my teleprompter. And there's no way I'm going to keep moving this camera back and forth when I need to create other content. And I don't want to just be having the one standalone over here, Oops. the one standalone over here that I always have to move and re readjust. I just want to hit record and just let them capture what they're going to capture. But I'm using the Sony a6400 um, camera right there. Um, let me put in here. I have the newer battery, dummy battery. That I'm using to keep these powered on. Um, so again, I'm always using newer products for something. Um, but yeah, I got those highlighted in the product carousel. Uh, <laughs> what lens is on the teleprompter again? That is my 30 millimeter on this one. I actually, I had the 16 millimeter on this one and it was fine, but my setup here kept changing. And so it didn't, it, my setup kept changing one and then my teleprompter itself kept leaning down and I couldn't get it positioned to stay where it needed to stay for the look I wanted. So it was either too much headspace all the time or it would just be like cutting me off like this all the time. And so it was it was my stand and the weight and I couldn't get it to work right. So I was like, you know what, let me just see what the 30 looks like. So I actually want the 16 here. But I put the 30 on and it it's it, it works with the stand that I have so I don't have to do so much adjusting with it. But th this is a, the 30 millimeter Sigma on this one. Um, and that one's just the 18 to 135 that came with the camera. And my 16 is over here. My 16 millimeter lens is over here. And I will swap it out on this camera when I'm creating some content. So I'll just swap it out when I when I need it. But Definitely, that's my 16 is my favorite one to use. It looks perfect to you. Oh, thank you. I, I need something. So I'm supposed to be doing a sponsored, some sponsored streams, um, and I want to do like product placement. So I want to put something over my shoulder there too. So we'll see if I can figure out something to kind of put over my shoulder. Um, a couple more things that I'm taking with me. Uh, let me grab it here is a gimbal so something else that was sent over to me i got a lot of okay, y'all i have a lot of stuff that's sent over to me if you if you all aren't streaming on amazon live stream on amazon live okay i'm just telling you especially if you're techies like me stream on amazon live so feiyu tech sent me their camera gimbal so that's sony a6400 i will be using on this gimbal I do need to make sure that I charge this gimbal up because it is not charged. Um, and I had never really used a like gimbal for cameras. I used gimbals for like smartphones before. So I am still learning to perfect my craft with this. Uh, I love the fact that it does have some controls on the front that make it a little bit easier, just visual controls so that I can um, pan, t tilt and zoom in and uh, get like these different crazy angles. Um, I like the fact that this has a three axis point on it so I can lock it into place in three different axes. So that's one there. Um, two, oops, two is here, that one. And three is here in the front, sideways like that. So it's a three axis gimbal. So um, looking forward to using this more because I don't really get a chance to use this one too much because otherwise other than just being here but um i will be using this at the conference to grab some of that good old b-roll footage that behind the scenes footage with the gimbal so that's from feyu tech so shout out to feyu tech for sending that over 
they got some pretty cool products too. If you've never heard of them, definitely I'd say check them out. Um, yeah, the tripod legs on there are nice too because I actually had it sitting on my desk one time. So I, I teach mastermind, you know, um, leveraging digital and social media to a group of entrepreneurs and some uh, ministry leaders. And so like I had it sitting on my desk as like my extra camera just to see if it could just work on its own just because this desk is so big. I made it work for a little while. So I literally just had it sitting off to the side over here. Um, and if it weren't for this big old monitor, I think I could have made it work. But uh, it, it worked pretty well, though, for what I was using it for at the time. Uh, let's see what else I got in here tonight. Uh, let me make sure I didn't, let me check over here on YouTube. Um, Digifusion Media says another big question that comes to mind is have you figured out how to use the stinger effect of the A10 Mini Extreme models? No, um, only because I don't need, I, in my environment, I don't need the stinger transition. So I haven't even spent the time to even look at the stinger transition. So um, if I, if it was something I needed or some, someone I was working with actually needed, I would dive into it, but I never use them, uh, for my transitions. Cause I'm heavy, I'm tra I'm heavy transitions on my, um, software side. So I don't really use them, um, on the ATEM. Ashley, thanks for the follow here on Amazon. Appreciate that. Um, the portable charger. Lens one, thanks for the follow. Thanks y'all for following. I got a lot of follows tonight, so that's awesome. Um, next one I got highlighted is the INIU portable charger and another product that was sent over to me. Shout out to INIU <laughs> for sending me this. Um, so this is a portable charger and I'll go with this camera so you guys can see it. So it has two USB ports for charging and a USB-C port. And in the middle there is a light. So you have a flashlight built into it. Um, if you turn it on, it gives you the percentage remaining battery life. So I actually was using this, the other Amazon Live video, when I was charging up my drone that was sent over to me from Hollystone. Shout out to Hollystone. If y'all aren't live streaming on Amazon, I'm telling y'all, join the club. I have a Facebook group called Amazon Live Creators. Um, check out the... The, the program to, to live stream on Amazon. There's some companies out here that want us to talk about their products. So um, this was sent over to me and I will be taking this with me to uh, make sure that all my devices stay charged up. So um, it comes with the cable, USB cable to USB-C to charge it up. And so I'll go USB-C here, USB into a USB charger and good to go. So I've never, I've charged this since I've had this for like the last three weeks. I don't use it, but it keeps its charge. Like when I had it, it was at like 85% and I've never charged it since. And it was like 81 and I was charging a drone. If y'all saw my Amazon live on Monday or Tuesday, I was using this to charge the drone up. Um, how much is that charger? Um, right now it's showing $19.99. So it's in the product carousel. Yep. It's highlighted right now in the, in the carousel. So if you guys are, um, if you're on mobile, um, jump off the chat side and click on the product side. But if you're watching me on computer or desktop, you should see it like right below the video. So I've got it highlighted right now in the product carousel. They make a couple different charging types or charger types. Um, but that's the one that they sent over to me to use. And it works good. Um, USB-C, there, there's even a little adapt, a little little tab you pull out on it and you can prop your phone in it too. So you can actually charge your phone and like watch your phone at the same time. So now the tab is a little tough to pull out. Like I had to put some force in it to get the tab out, but that's the only thing that, you know, I wish was a little bit easier to work with. Um, but how many times am I going to prop my phone up on the charger? Probably like never. <laughs> um... Let's see what else I got here. And I can't, uh, I got some gaffer's tape now. <laughs> gaffer's tape, I, I'm not gonna spend too much long on it. It looks like duct tape, except uh, it, it doesn't leave that sticky residue. So I use this at my church to run cables. And uh, when I pull it up, that sticky residue isn't on there. So gaffer's tape, I'm taking this with me because I'm gonna be running some cables along the floor. So I'm taking this along with me for the ride. 
Um, I want to talk about the case. I got to talk about the case before I go. Um, I've got my a bag that I'm going to be taking with me. Um, hey, Willie says gaffers for the win all the time. Yes, sir. Um, I got sent these uh, tracking um, tracking devices. So I, I haven't had a chance to set those up today. But there are these GPS trackers. And what I'm going to do is use these for my uh, equipment cases that I'm taking. So um, company reached out to me. Track, the Tracky reached out and said, hey, uh, love for you to check out these. And I said, yeah, I can talk about them on Amazon Live. And so I didn't get a chance to set these up today. But what I'm going to do is use one of these for each of my Pelican cases where my equipment is so that I can keep tabs on my equipment. So um, when I started like looking into this, there are like over 21,000 reviews on Amazon for this product. So um, if you're looking for something to uh, track your equipment when you travel or just have GPS tracker for tracking whatever, um, you may want to check these out. So I did unbox those. Um, it did look like there was a setup process to go with it. So I just haven't had a chance to actually set them up with the app and um, all that good stuff. But I got two of these that I will be um, using for my Pelican cases. So um, the Pelican case, I'm going to highlight the I have two of them in the product carousel. One is literally right below this box of equipment in here. There's like a whole bunch of sponsored stuff in there. And right below there, there's a Pelican 1650 case, all black. And then I also have one that I just ordered. Now, I wish Pelican would have sent me a case. Hey, Pelican, send me a case. I could use it. I also have just ordered this one, which is the red and black version. So I have two of these 1650 Pelican cases. So what I'll do is probably have to switch camera angles here and show you all from the other side. Um, or just back up. Maybe it'd be easy for me just to back up. Um, now, inside the Pelican case, no, I'm going to show you all from the other angle because it's going to be easier on my back. <laughs> all right, so let's, all right, so camera five there. All right, so let's go on this side. All right, all right, so. Now, I did order some extra components. Um, we'll get to these in a second. Now, like I said, I have two of these. Um, the the all black one that I ordered, it came with foam. So you actually have to cut out the foam um, to fit the size of your components. So it works good for my PTZ cameras and my controller. I can cut the foam to the size that I need. Uh, but then I needed to take stuff like the tripods and um, some of the other equipment that I don't need to, quote unquote, protect from moving around so much. Uh, so I got this one without the foam, specifically without the foam. And um, this is kind of what it is itself. Now, it does have these nice wheels that are on the back, nice four sets of wheels on the back. And then it has the uh, tab up here where you can pull it out up here and drag it okay so i can just pull that out and drag it along so you can see down at the bottom so got four massive wheels down here so i'll be taking two of these cases with the equipment that i need and hopefully i can get all my stuff in here um and it's got these nice hard snap tabs down so i'm definitely going to be using this this is the red and black version and then i ordered um this 1655 padded case and so this is padded case and I'm actually going to I'm, I'm going to put my cameras and stuff in here because I like this better than the phone because quite honestly you have to cut the phone to your own dimensions and it's it's a mess uh, the, the cutting the foam is a mess so I just bought the padded case and I can re um reposition the the, the uh, velcro inside the case to make the size fit the uh, cameras and things like that that i'm going to take because it's a lot better to just put this inside of here than it is that foam and actually i can get more in here than i can the foam so 
you, you can get the phone one. I would recommend getting one of these rather than the phone. That's just my opinion. And then I also ordered this uh, lid organizer. And the lid organizer has a whole bunch of different little pouches that are going to go on, on the backside of the, the case itself. And I can put in my cables, extra batteries, um, anything that's small component wise. And then this will be my set up for one of my cases okay so this is this is like this phone came with this case but i'm not sure why because i'm not going to use it but the other foam is real thick and when you cut it it's like thick foam so um but i love the cases themselves so um hopefully hopefully i can get everything inside with uh these two cases that i need but these are really cool case pelican makes some really good equipment so there are other cases on the market but sometimes you know you just got to go with something you can trust that you can rely on and don't have to think twice about so that's kind of why i went with the pelican route a little bit more expensive than some of the other cases on the market but their quality is something that um is undeniable from just a lot of people that have used their stuff before so let's switch over here. Um, Charles says, can you repeat the camera that you're using right now? Um, so I think you're talking about this one. So this is the Sony a6400 um, and on Amazon, um, it's in the product carousel. Um, doo -doo -doo. I use the same case for travel, works great. I ordered yellow handles, ordered the lid organizer and an extended corona carry, carry handle. I'm tall, my legs hit the back when I'm wheeling it. Yeah, I'm short, so I will not have that problem. Um, TSA can throw that around and not break it. Um, you can padlock it closed too. Yeah, yeah. And I did order like some TSA approved locks. They're actually up there. I probably won't grab those just for sake of time, but I did grab those up there. Um, cool. I think I got through a good majority of what I wanted to share with you guys today on Amazon Live. I think I did. Appreciate it, Willie. Follow me on YouTube and Facebook groups as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm glad you, I'm glad Willie enjoyed it. If the rest of you guys enjoyed it, let me know in the chats. Um, it's always cool to talk about things you love so um if you guys ever follow me here on amazon love talking about digital and tech related products if there's anything specific that you guys kind of um, may want like a show for let me know i've done shows on like just focused on cameras just focused on lighting just focused on audio um and i like to like just teach it you know so if you have questions like how it actually works in cable so like just like we connected this wireless system on this camera like if i can do it in real time to show you what it looks like and what it sounds like definitely willing to do that um five finds a company that i've worked with and they like there's six five fine microphones in that box um i literally had them lined up on this table one day like from start to finish and i unhooked them and hooked them and unhooked them and hooked them so you guys could hear what they sound like so that you can just make you know decision that's best for you right um so it's awesome having you guys here um on amazon and on youtube um charles says thank you i do uh church youtube channel with a downgrade sony we'll be getting this cool yeah the, the sony cameras are cool like the mirrorless cameras get dummy batteries that way you don't have to think about them cutting off i know a lot of people think um they don't you know they don't last for hours and hours but they really do like i i have turned on my camera and accidentally left it on and it just be on for hours and it doesn't cause any issues uh simon says you recommended a smart home folder that i purchased i liked it so much i bought a second one and then a third one so yes thank you for being so professional awesome 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 yeah i try to you know i don't like tell people like just go out and buy this just to be buying it but you know i'm i'm just big on use cases um certain things will work for certain people just and if i if I know kind of what you're using it for, then I can definitely uh, use that um, to help give you the best answers that I know of, right? Um, 
I've got like these Manfrotto poles over here that like kind of replace tripods. And I was telling the lady about that for her lighting situation because the tripods in your room, they take up a lot of space. They can take up the floor space, but you can buy these Manfrotto poles that just go across the top and just mount things on that. I actually had it a Manfrotto pole behind here that my camera was mounted on too because I, I needed to push my desk further back. So a lot of, a lot of stuff in here um, that's hidden around here that I'll, We'll pull out in some other live streams as well. Um, other cameras need active cooling fans when used all day. Yep. Um, I left my Sony. Well, he said I left my Sony A6000 on for weeks at my desk. You're right. They just work with the dummy batteries. Yeah, they just work. So um, I like them. And, and I forgot who said it earlier, but, you know, just changing out the lenses can give you those different looks that you want to zoom in, in zoom in out. So I actually just took. I took this one last year to my nephew's football games and just used the lens on it, just zoomed in and manually zoomed out. And I got a really, you know, good video. Um, and I know I got a good video because he said it was a good video. So uh, just by swapping out the lenses for a couple hours um, with these cameras. So, um, but that's all I got for you guys tonight. Thank you guys for hanging out with me here on Amazon Live. Um, I hope you guys definitely enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you guys in some upcoming Amazon lives. I won't be live streaming next week because I'll be out of town, um, but stay tuned for some YouTube content uh, where I'll be documenting that process and some behind the scenes. Not sure if I'll edit it next week, but I'll record it next week for sure. So um, see you guys in the next video. Y'all have a great rest of your day.